Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. And if you are new, welcome to my channel. I am Jamie Beth. Today we're gonna to talk about um, seemingly impossible places that actually exist. So these are places that exist in the world. And um, they're just, each of them have a very unique thing about them. I saw this article uh, while searching articles for other things and um, of course I had to read it and I'm like this would be a great thing to talk about because I didn't even know these places existed and you might not even know or maybe you do I don't know but we're gonna go ahead and jump right into this video the first place we're gonna talk about um, is the sea of stars the glittering shores of the Valdu Islands of the Maldives glow blue at night. How neat would that be to see? Though the island only has a population of about 500 people, tourists come from all over the world to bask in the presence of this body of water known as the Sea of Stars with the natural sparkle. The Sea of Stars contains a type of um, phyto phytoplankton called dinoflagellites. When scientists researched the organisms, they found a cell membrane that reacts to electrical impulses, causing the dinoflagellites to light up in the water. Next up is Lake Hillier. Discovered in 1802 by British navigator and cartographer Matthew Flinders, this bubblegum-colored lake has been leaving people in awe for centuries. The dazzling color of this water is not temporary as it stays pigmented even when bottled in a container. What makes this lake interesting is that no one knows for certain why the lake is pink. Although scientists have hypothesized that it must have something to do with the type of bacteria that resides in the water. That being said, the water is still safe to swim in and is now becoming a popular tourist destination. The lake is hard to get to, but if you manage to make the trek, the experience will be worthwhile. That sounds really cool. I would love to see this lake. Moving on to something called the door to hell. So for all you thrill seekers out there, there is a place in Derwe's Turkmenistan um, and it is the home of one of the most terrifying and hellish tour attractions on the planet. The Darvasa Gas Crater, better known as the Door to Hell, has a diameter of 226 feet and is 98 feet deep. The crater was first discovered in 1971 when Soviet engineers thought it was an oil site. Just after they began assessing the site to prepare for drilling, the ground collapsed into what we now know as the door to hell. Scientists then decided to keep the crater burning to stave off poisonous gases. Though the Turkmenistan government hopes that the site will become a popular tourist destination over time. Moving along to the hum of Teos. Inexplicable sounds are nothing new, but an eerie hum that lingers throughout the small town of Teos has been baffling people for years. The sound was first reported in 1993 when a group of locals complained to Congress about it. A survey was conducted by Joe Mullins, professor of engineering at the University of New Mexico. After interviewing the citizens of Teos, Mullins found that only 2% of the population were hearers of the sound. Although the source of the sound was never found, Mullins um, found that the hearers of the hum described it in different ways. Some reported it as a hum, while others described it as a buzz or a whirl. On to the circles of Namibia. You will have to travel all the way to the Atlantic side of South Africa to see this particular collection of red circular patches on the sandy floor of the Namib Namibia desert. For years, scientists have been trying to figure out where these patches originate from. They're known as fairy circles 
ranging from five feet to 130 feet wide and can only really be seen from a bird's eye view. The so one strange feature about these circles is their bizarre low level magnetism. If you drag a magnet across the circle, the magnet will pick up more soil in the inside of the circle than outside of its boundaries. While some scientists believe that the circles are caused by famished termites, others have speculated that it's caused by a toxic bush called Euphorbia dominara. Regardless of what causes it, I mean, it sounds pretty interesting. Moving along to the Nazca Lines of Peru. If you've never heard of a geoglyph, it's a large design consisting of either an array of lines carved into the ground negative geoglyphs, or arrangement of materials, positive geoglyphs, the Nazca lines in Peru are perhaps the most well-known collection of these geoglyphs. Etched deeply into the soil of the Nazca Desert, scientists have estimated that there were, they were made sometime between 500 BC and 500 AD. Of the designs in this collection are animals, plants, and a series of straight lines that expand across the landscape. The Nazca lines are best viewed from an airplane or a helicopter, but some of the designs can also be seen from the foothills. Scientists have hypothesized that the lines have something to do with the Nazca people and their roots in astrology. <clears throat> On to the Mevel Cave, I think that's how it's pronounced. For the past 5.5 um, million years, this Romanian cave has been isolated from the rest of the world. It was only opened up when Socialist Republic of Romania workers were searching for a new area to build a nuclear power plant in 1986. You would think that the cave's conditions would make it uninhabitable, but scientists were able to find 48 different species living in this cave, 33 of which are unique to the cave. Some of the creatures found were various spiders, scorpions, centipedes, leeches, and isopods. Given the darkness of the caves, the species do not have sight. Less than 100 people have actually ever visited this cave. So we're now moving along to the Ringing Rocks of Pennsylvania. There is this certain family of rocks in Pennsylvania that has mysterious musical ability. When struck, <clears throat> the rocks are known to ring and make little sounds and make a very distinctive metallic clang. The sound is so baffling that people often question whether or not the rocks are really made of stone. These musical rocks cover roughly seven to eight acres of Ringing Rocks County Park in Pennsylvania. How these boulders appeared is a true mystery. When geologists inspected the rocks, they found that they were composed of a volcanic substance called diabase, which is made up of iron and other hard minerals. <clears throat> Perhaps the most unusual thing about this rock family is the fact that it's at the top of a hill when normally fields of rocks happen as a result of avalanche. In Italy, there is something known as the double tree. And this is just like the coolest thing ever to see. This is a mulberry tree with a cherry tree growing up the middle of it. And this doesn't normally happen, or if it does, the other tree doesn't really grow as much. Um, it usually stays very, very small and sometimes won't live a very long time. Um, but this, this is two like big full grown trees and one is definitely growing out of the other. It's so crazy. The cherry tree stands well above the mulberry tree. Scientists are still not sure how this came about, but it is likely that a bird dropped a cherry tree seed on top of the mulberry tree. Usually this could only be possible is um, if the cherry tree's roots actually went all the way down to the ground. So I guess that's how the cherry tree was able to grow as big as it did. Um, still crazy phenomenon. So moving along to the petrifying well. 
When you imagine a body of water that turns objects into stone, it kind of seems like something out of a fairy tale, but Mother Shipton's petrifying well does just that. For many years, it was believed that the petrifying well was witchcraft on Mother Shipton's behalf, as she was well known and commonly blamed in her day for anything tragic or dark. Since the 1600s, people have feared the waters that fill this well, while others have tested it by planting random belongings in the water to see what happens. People have left their hats, stuffed animals, toys, and other items in the well, only to return three to five months later to find that they are as hard as stone. Moving along, um, to the Devil's Kettle. This one is really interesting too. Judge C.R. Magni State Park's most sought after feature consists of the Brule River and its waterfall that splits into two. One side of the waterfall continues flowing down the river while the other one drops off at a deep dark hole and vanishes. The vanishing waterfall is known as the Devil's Kettle, and it lies along the North Shore of Minnesota. For years, park visitors would marvel at the magic of this vanishing waterfall, sometimes even dropping objects into the fall in hopes that they'd be able to follow its streamline. Jeff Green, a scientist who specializes in hydrology, decided to get a team together to take a further look into this phenomenon. Upon doing so, they found evidence in the water volume that suggested that the water wasn't being distributed elsewhere. Green seems to think that he cracked the code, but if it's true, then what happened to all of the objects that have been thrown in by visitors? Moving along to the Crooked Forest. So tucked away in the West Poland woodland is a collection of pine trees with a 90 degree bend at the base known as the Crooked Forest. The Crooked Forest consists of about 400 trees with trunks that grow sideways for about three to nine feet before bending straight up. Strangely, this pocket of crooked trees is part of a bigger forest of normal upright pine trees. Scientists still have not figured out what is causing the trees to form this way. Some have suggested that the trees were deformed on purpose in order to use the naturally carved wood to build furniture or boats. Others have speculated that the tree's curves could have resulted from natural causes like a snowstorm. Okay, we are moving along to the Rainbow Mountains of Peru. Now, when you're looking at a picture of this, it almost looks like it's just a painted picture. It, you wouldn't think this was real. Highly regarded as one of the most spectacular geologic features on Earth, the Ausian Gate Mountain, also known as the Rainbow Mountains of Peruvian Andes, is marvelously striped with colors of all kinds. It also serves as a testament of how spectacular geology can be, with each layer representing a different mineral composition. From lavender to maroon to gold, this colorful mountain is believed to be holy and sacred, and it is a site that many locals congregate for a daily worship. <clears throat> this painted mountain requires a pretty long and tiresome trek, as it takes multiple days to get to it. When you gaze at these Peruvian mountains, you are observing a product of centuries of erosion, weathering, and magnificent talents of nature. Okay, moving along to the Michigan Triangle. And what is funny about this, well, I don't know if it's funny, but I live in Michigan. I've never heard of this. So like the Bermuda Triangle, there is a version of this in Michigan. There is a piece of Lake Michigan stretching from Ludington to Benton Harbor, Michigan, and to Manitowoc, Wisconsin. It's been a subject of mystery and speculation since 1891 when the first boat, Thomas Hume, disappeared there. The Thomas Hume disappeared overnight during a windstorm and was never found. Neither were the passengers. 
This was not the only account. Over the centuries, several other strange events occurred with no scientific explanation, causing people to speculate outside of rational belief. Some have even said um, they saw UFOs and strange lights surrounding that area at different times. Moving along to Abraham Lake. At first glance, it might appear as though you're looking at a huge school of jellyfish who are doing some type of synchronized performance, but that's not water. It's solid ice. And those aren't jellyfish, they're methane bubbles. Canada's Abraham Lake is known for these unique crystallized bubbles. However, its beautiful appearance is deceiving. Methane gas is a potent, methane gas is a potent greenhouse gas. And as the lake melts, the methane is released into the atmosphere. There's a general consensus among humanity that if aliens were ever to arrive, they would arrive via New Mexico. As if the mysteries and conspiracies about Roswell, New Mexico weren't enough circumstantial evidence, non-believers need not look any further than Ashish Lapa. This natural landscape is peppered with clusters of bizarre mushroom-like formations that seem to defy gravity, and their unusual shapes don't have immediately available explanations. These are long, skinny rock formations with these giant, like, almost flat kind of rocks on top. It would look like they would either lean and fall, but they're not. They're perfectly sitting on top of these, like, crazy, skinny, almost cone-like rocks. Moving along to Blood Falls. And this one seems really interesting as well. So these falls look like a very hungry polar bear just went to town on dinner. The Blood Falls of Antarctica are as scary as they sound. The creepy blood red color that oozes from just one corner on the tip of the Taylor Glacier is actually salt water with a high iron oxide content. As comforting as that is, it still looks as scary as it sounds. The trickle runs down this 50 foot vertical face of the glacier. For all the beauty in natural landscapes, nature sure doesn't mind some creep factor as well. Have you guys tried these are Dell um, aqua lashes. These are the 341 are aqua lashes. All you do is really you wet your finger, you rub it along the base of the lash, and it gets sticky. These are awesome. If you are someone that's allergic to certain types of glue, um, I mean, obviously there's still a little bit of glue on these, so I don't know if you would have the same reaction, but I tend to have. Um, sensitive eyes and I can't always wear eyelash glue for long periods of time because it like kind of makes my eyelids puff up but these don't do that so um they're awesome check out the aqua lashes I've only seen a few um types of lashes are all kind of dramatic but they they look really pretty on and they stay on all day I love them I highly recommend you guys give these a try see what you think of them. If you have tried these, let me know in the comments below. I would love to know if you've um, tried these as well, but I'm in love with these. I think they're great. Moving along to the Catedral de Carmel. There's something quite dreamy about the swirls of vibrant colors found in the rocks that form underground cave walls of Chile's Catedral de Marmon. Even stranger is how they look from a distance massive heavy rocks standing on what looks like toothpicks that wedge into the water. So neat and beautiful. Okay, last but not least, we have the fly geyser. The fly geyser is a small geothermic geyser found in the Nevada flats. The geyser is a product of failed well digging. When the groundwater was discovered to be near boiling point, 
it was abandoned. But the warm water now hit a clear path to the surface, so it continues to sprout out geothermal water. The rocks get their color from bright algae species that thrive in the warm water. The geyser was recently included in a private land sale bought out by alternative cultural festival throwers, the Burning Man Project. So that is the video for today. These beautiful, almost impossible to believe that they're real places all over the world. And, you know, I would love to see a few of these. They just look breathtaking and just the uniqueness of them. I mean, it's just something to see, I think. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Remember to hit that subscribe button if you haven't subscribed already, as well as the little notification bell next to it. It should notify you every time I upload a video. Thank you so much. I'll see you again soon. Bye.